Everyone say hello to Lindsay Music. She is the mayor of Colon Town, and Colon Town is an online community for colorectal cancer patients and their caregivers. And it was really instrumental to Jamie and I in our journey. So, Lindsay, hey, it's great to see you. But of course, you came to Colon Town too. You were diagnosed with colon cancer in your late 30s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was 37, uh, solo mom of three. And, you know, I just, I'd had some signs and symptoms and I had a colonoscopy scheduled down the road that I'd finally convinced the doctors to schedule for me since I was young. They just kind of did some other tests and never really thought it was necessary for a scope. But um, eventually I had one scheduled, but I ended up in the emergency room first with stomach pains and issues. And when they did the CT scan, they found 13 tumors on my liver and signs of um, colorectal cancer. So um, I was in the hospital for about six weeks at diagnosis, trying to get all that lined out, but yeah. that was in um, 2018. And so I'm still, you know, piecing treatments together and working hard yeah. to try and uh, keep this going. And thriving with stage four cancer, yeah. which I think sometimes is uh, people don't understand that you can continue to live and say, mm -hmm. all right, this is the next treatment. And this is part of the journey and finding those next treatments is what's so instrumental in linking up with other people who are facing the same kind of cancer. Very much so. When I was first, I mean, I live in a very rural area. And when I was first diagnosed, to me, it sounded hopeless, helpless. And the doctors said I would never be operable and that we would just piece together some different chemo cocktails and keep rotating those around and work through trials. And um, I had no reason to question it. It seemed like it made sense. It seemed like a heavy tumor burden to me. It seemed yeah. um, that I would always be inoperable as well. But um, through the colorectal cancer community, it took them a lot of prodding for me to, um, to learn to advocate, to find my voice in the, in the room with the doctors and to ask for different options, more options. Is there anything else I can try and do? And, um, you know, so many people came alongside to give me the tools and give me the options and help give me the language. I, I was, um, you know, a humanities major. I didn't have any science background, medical background. So it was a sharp learning curve. <laughs> It's a sharp learning curve for everyone. And, and I think what we realized too, is that you do have to advocate for yourself and educate yourself as much as possible. That's what led me to Colon Town. So when you found Colon Town online, how did that change everything for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I met multiple patients who just had stage four with the same kind of situation, you know, the same kind of markers for their disease and the same kind of tumor burden. And they said, you know, like I've been here, I've been doing this for years and, you know, there are, there are other options. So, you know, they taught me to, um, and walked alongside me, not just taught me, but walked with me as I went to, you know, second opinion appointments and, um, learned how to ask, um, educated questions to get the answers that I needed. And, so I remember going to my second opinion appointment at an NCI center and I just kind of blurted everything I learned from the community. I was just like, I'm MSS and I have this and this, and I have, I know that I have tumors on both sides of my liver, but most of them are on the left side. And I've heard about an HAI pump. I just kind of blurted everything that I learned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was just a student that was talking to me at the moment. I didn't know. I didn't know if it was a student or a doctor or what. And he was like, I think the doctor can help you more with this. <laughs> and <laughs> so you end up educating yourself <laughs> even more than some of the med students. <laughs> yeah. So the doctor came in then and she brought a couple students with her and she kept pausing me. And, and then she would turn to the doc to the students and say, she's talking about da, 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 and explain to them what we were discussing. And that just built my confidence that you know, not only had I gone from feeling hopeless and helpless, but um, the community had really helped me to not only advocate for myself, but to learn the pieces that I needed to, that I wasn't way off base. I wasn't pursuing some kind of crazy yeah. Hail Mary. I, I was looking for something that actually had traction and that medical doctors were aware of. And it was good. Sure. 
there's so much of cancer that's beyond our control. And, and I think that that was the really hard part for me as a caregiver. And um, I can't put myself in the patient's shoes, but I know that what, when I lived with one, it's that you can't control much, but the knowledge and being able to find out information and then just the connection with people who are walking the same road. Talk to me about Coal in Town, how it has grown over the last several years and its instrumental part in helping people connect with each other who are fighting the same disease. Right. You know, Coal in Town is an online community and um, it's now over 7,000 people. And it just started with a small group of patients that really just um, realized that only patients can really understand other patients, that that connection, it's hard to find other patients. Where I live, I didn't know anybody with colorectal cancer. It's a very rural area, like I said, and I'm young. Um, it was hard for me to find anyone that knew what I was talking about. So to find an online community with other people who are dealing with the exact same issues and um, it's just, you immediately feel, even though it's virtual, you know, the people are virtual, um, in different locations all over the world, uh, you immediately feel like you found your people, you found people who can relate to what you're going through. And, um, you know, it's grown to over 7,000 people. And the part of the goal is to connect with patients directly. You know, it's not just, we don't just like bring a ton of people in and throw science at them or throw mm -hmm. whatever at them. We try to connect folks. So if you have we have all these different neighborhoods in our Colon Town community. And um, we have hosts for each of the communities, each of the different neighborhoods to help walk with patients as they navigate their area of disease. So if you're dealing with liver mets, um, we have Betsy Post that helps walk through patients and she keeps track of everything. She knows whose scans are coming up and surgeries and we say she's got a major Rolodex there in her brain, <laughs> but she, she remembers these things and helps, you know, it's just to know that you're known by somebody who can help is helpful. And so each of the, you know, we have nine trials, communities, clinical trials, clinical trials can be terrifying. They're scary to me. <laughs> it's so complicated to try to get through and try to find which one and then qualify all the information. It is staggering. We found tremendous help in the, in the trials page as well. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a whole nother language and it's, mm -hmm. you know, um, it seems like a whole nother language anyways to me. And I, it, it's, it's a whole nother system of the medical world to try and navigate, but to have people who are going through trials themselves or have gone through trials and can help walk with you and tell you exactly what to expect. You know, they might not be able to tell you how you'll respond or how the actual treatments will go for you, but they can say, I've been in the process and this is how it was for me. And to have that, that's, that's priceless. They also have groups for, we also have groups for younger people who have uh, colorectal cancer, also just groups just for caregivers. So they yeah. can go in and talk about some of the things that they're dealing with. Also the early stage cancers, which is different than when we're talking about stage four CRC. Um, that's what I think is so amazing about uh, the, the community as well. But Lindsay, talk about even the, the information now empowering people like yourself to go out and get more information um, that Paltown is funding to be able to bring back to the community. Yeah. Um, so, you know, science, one of our, one of our taglines is Colon Town is a place where hope meets science. So, you know, we don't just throw out platitudes of, oh, you've got this, or, oh, you're going to get through this. Oh, it'll be fine. We try mm -hmm. to give actual tools. So the leaders, a lot of the leaders and members yeah. who are inclined to help other patients um, will attend all of the big conferences, you know, the, the big research conferences on, um, gastrointestinal cancers and um, where the latest research on, on, on breakthroughs and different treatments and trials are released. And, and this team of, of leaders will go through and um, try to translate the information into language that is more understandable, not just yeah. for doctors. And over the last couple of years, doctors have realized that colon town patients they can recognize colon town patients when they come in, they say, Oh, this patient clearly understands more than the average, um, average member that comes into the office. And, um, 
it's, it's just a, to be able to not only understand with some of our leaders, the science behind what's going on, but to be able to translate it to members. And really we have, it's information that needs to be given to multiple cultures, multiple, multiple um, different socioeconomic um, Mm -hmm. areas and things like that. People of all different um, in other countries and so forth. So learning how to communicate those kinds of things to folks right where they're at is invaluable. As we move through um, Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, what do you want people to know as someone who is a stage four survivor, but still fighting? Yeah. You know, there are so many things that I have gained through the last, I I wouldn't wish this on anyone. I wouldn't wish this cancer, this disease on anyone. And, um, but it has given me going through this experience. I have gained incredible friendships. I have become more assertive in advocating for not only myself, but for those around me. And I see that happen to the community with all of the members. I see, I see the, um, the confidence in the patients grow. I see the hope grow and I see, um, you know, just the, the interpersonal relationships and the power that that brings to patient care, knowing that you have people that are with you through it. It's not all, it's, it's such a roller coaster. It's up and down and it's ugly and it's, it can be horribly bad at times and it can have its up moments too, but either way you have people with you who are feeling all these things with you and walking with you through it. So I felt very alone before, I felt very alone before Colon Town. And now I feel like no matter what, I always have somebody that I can reach out to that'll be with me through the good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a feeling of being caught. Yeah. There's, there's this net here and what you just said, the ups and the downs of it, I could go on Colon Town at two o'clock in the morning mm-hmm. on a board and say, I'm thinking about this, or I just, what could this be next? Or I'm waiting, we're waiting for scans. Um, mm-hmm. And there was always someone there saying, we understand that anxiety, or we got you, or we see you, or thinking of you, not, not making it better, Lindsay. And yeah. you said that, I mean, this is not just like, keep fighting harder and have yeah. a great attitude and everything will be fine. I think that that's a probably a larger discussion we could have about about cancer um, and mm-hmm. and kind of maybe the misunderstanding um, that, that people don't see if they're not experiencing it firsthand. But um, if someone wants to join Colon Town, newly diagnosed, their caregivers, what should they do? Yeah, we have a website at colontown.org and um, there's a form on there to fill out. And once you fill out the form, um, we can we will connect you with um, one of our leaders, most likely Diane or Kim. See, I mean, and we know exactly who is going to help process people through getting to know other members, and they will personally reach out and connect with you and um, introduce you to the different folks that might be able to help for your specific situation. 